Hi, very good morning. I am Dr. Janak Patel, MD, General Physician. All my video lectures are mainly for educative purpose. Today we will be dealing with one of the another interesting topic. Good number of time you can come in your everyday practice. Very, very frequently, there are persons with iron deficiency anemia where you are not able to identify the cause for iron deficiency anemia. Always we go and search for GI tract disorders and among those disorders, there are something which we call as disorders where they do not have a frank bleeding or over bleeding. And they have got what we call as an occult blood loss. And among those, there will be some group of disorders which are dangerous or we call red flag like malignancy, polyp, diverticulums, etc. And for that identification, you go for what we call as an occult blood test. So we'll be talking on little bit on occult blood test, what is occult blood loss, what are the other terminology utilized, we call occult bleeding, there is something called as a obscure and there is also a term called as occult and obscure, there is something called as overt, overt means which you can see by your naked eye. It is clearly there is a bleeding, either hematemesis or hematochesia or we call bleeding for rectum. And there is also a word called overt obscure. We will be using those terms and we will be explaining you those. And there is a pure terminology called as an obscure, which is endoscopically negative where you cannot identify the cause. So we will be dealing under three big headings, introduction, etiology and the test which are there. Whenever we use the word occult blood loss, by and large it is taken for granted in stool. And there are many different ways of blood loss or bleeding from GI tract. Two classical ways where by a naked eye you can make out. One is hematemesis and second is hematochesia. Hematemesis means presence of blood in a vomitus. Hematogesia means passing of frank blood per stool or per rectum. There is one another mode where you lose or you have got a bleeding and it can present in a pattern we call as a dark tarry stool. That is we call malina. There will be a chronic blood loss and that results into an anemia we we'll usually call that as an iron deficiency anemia and that chronic blood loss if there is clear cut presence of blood in vomitus or in a stool or in the form of malina it is easy to identify that it is because of GI tract loss but when it is hidden or you cannot identify we call occult blood loss in stool so, this is the group of people whom you have to identify, 4 and 5 number of group. These are easy and then you can go for investigation accordingly. So, first we will be talking little bit regarding some of the terminology which is there in a GI bleeding. One we call as upper GI bleeding means GI bleeding originates proximal to ligament of trace. Lower GI bleeding, it is after or distal to ligament of trace. Then there is one group which we call as a small bowel bleeding where it starts distal to the ampulla of water and proximal to ileocecal junction or ileocecal valve. It is also known as a middle GI bleeding or small bowel bleeding. Suspected small bowel bleeding means there is a GI bleeding, but you cannot identify the source of bleeding. 
after performing both upper as well as lower gi endoscopy so we call endoscopy negative or we use about suspected small bowel bleeding there is one another term which is very frequently being utilized is obscure gi bleeding where gi bleeding in which no bleeding source is identified by either entire gi tract has been comprehensively evaluated with advanced endoscopy and imaging technique indirectly thoroughly investigated patient and if you can't identify the source of bleeding the word utilized is obscure gi bleeding so obscure gi bleeding can be either overt overt means you can see by your naked eye or occult depending on whether clinically evident gi bleeding is present indirectly means even an overt bleeding person has got overt bleeding you are able to see that person is presenting either as a hematemesis or hematochezia or as a malina but on investigation thorough investigation by endoscopy or by imaging technique you are not able to identify the cause then you label that as obscure so now if you have got an overt bleeding and it is obscure you are not able to identify we will call as a overt obscure or if it is occult bleeding and you are not able to identify the cause occult obscure so these are the words which are being utilized and overt bleeding is visible gi bleeding where either it presents as hematemesis or hematochezia or as malina the term overt gi bleeding is preferred rather than acute because acute impl implies the rate of the patient symptoms onset or how they present and does not necessarily describe the visibility of the bleeding also while the patient with an overt bleeding can present acutely and over gi bleeding can also occur intermittently or over a extended period of time so that is just you can see by your naked eye but if this over gi bleeding on investigation you cannot identify the cause then you will label that as obscure bleeding while occult bleeding gi bleeding that cannot be seen by naked eye and patient with an occult bleeding presents with an positive fecal occult blood test positive or he comes to you with an iron deficiency anemia where other cause of anemia are excluded then you label that as occult gi bleeding and there is one another term which is being utilized massive gi bleeding where gi bleeding is associated with a hemodynamically instability so person develops hypotension with fall of systolic blood pressure tachycardia symptom signs of shock etc or bleeding which requires blood transfusion more than 4 units of pex cell in 24 hours you will label that as massive gi bleeding so these are some of the terminology which are utilized in gi bleeding we are interested in this group occult gi bleeding now there is an interesting part of this whenever a person gets bleeding in the upper gi tract this particular rbc will be broken down globin will be degraded by a bacteria heme will be converted into by a bacterial into heme derived porphyrin if it is in the proximal colon globin will be degraded by bacteria and heme will be again converted into heme derived porphyrin and if it is in a recto sigmoid colon there will be minimal change in a hemoglobin molecule so this will present always as a frank bleeding indirectly if a person presents with a frank bleeding per rectum or hematochezia it is more from recto sigmoid colon lower colon while if it is presenting in a form of malina it will be either from upper gi tract small bowel or from proximal colon because this hemoglobin will be converted into heme and globin globin will be broken down into 
amino acids and heme will be converted into porphyrin and that porphyrin will be oxidized and will that will be presenting as malina now if the quantity of blood loss is so small which cannot be seen by a naked eye but you can detect by a fecal occult blood test which will detect either heme or heme derived porphyrin will call as a fecal occult blood test positive and that type of blood loss will label that as occult blood loss or occult bleeding because you cannot detect by your naked eye but you can detect either on a microscope or sometime even you cannot detect on a microscope you will be able to detect by fecal occult blood test fobt so now we go through those some terms definitions and then how you do the occult blood test so very clear occult blood means invisible or occult blood cannot be seen by a naked eye now there will be two terms obscure and occult obscure means there is a gi bleeding but unknown origin and that persist or recur and on endoscopic or radiological investigation you cannot identify the cause you label that as obscure and occult gi bleeding is bleeding which is not visible to the patient or to the physician and results in either positive fecal occult blood test means fecal occult blood test is positive or you may be able to detect as iron deficiency anemia with or without fecal occult blood test positive means all fecal occult blood test positive may not have iron deficiency anemia but if a person has got iron deficiency anemia where you cannot identify the cause of iron deficiency anemia and if fecal occult blood test is positive it is due to occult bleeding from gi tract so occult gi tract bleeding compromise comprises of almost 5% of gi tract bleeding and majority of them are from small intestine so occult blood we already mentioned non visible and may be positive for fecal occult blood test and person might have anemia like iron deficiency anemia overt visible bleeding may be present as a malina or hematochezia overt can be active or inactive bleeding and in that overt if you can't identify the cause or in an occult you can't identify the cause you will call as obscure bleeding where it refers to a recurrent bleeding in which the source is not identified by endoscopy colonoscopy small bowel radiography etc then you will label that as an obscure now if there is an occult bleeding and it is obscure then you call as a obscure occult that is recurrent iron deficiency anemia or recurrent positive fecal occult blood test because there is no overt bleeding but if it is overt recurrent passage of visible blood loss with malina and hematochezia and you are not able to identify the cause even after a thorough good investigation will use a word obscure over so if it is over as a presentation but you can't identify the cause obscure over and if it is an occult bleeding and you can't identify the cause even after a thorough investigation will label that is a obscure occult presentation can be occult or overt but after investigation you put a in a group whether obscure or it is you can identify the etiology so bleeding of unknown origin that persist or recur after a negative colonoscopy and negative upper gi endoscopy will label that is an obscure and in that obscure if you find out fecal occult blood test positive iron deficiency anemia may be present and there is no visible bleeding 
नो विजिबल ब्लीडिंग देन यू विल लेबल एज ऑप्स्योर ओवर्ट अरे ऑप्स्योर ओकट एंड इफ दज अ विजिबल ब्लीडिंग इन द फॉर्म ऑफ मलिना हिमेटामेसिस हिमेटोचीजिया और कॉफी ब्राउन कलर वॉमिटिंग एटसेट्रा यू विल लेबल दैट एज ऑप्स्योर ओवर्ट so hematemesis presence of blood in vomitus which may be coffee brown color or a frank blood if it is a frank blood it is an active bleeding usually from esophagus like esophageal varices or maybe a active bleeding from gi tract more common and before or proximal to ligament of tris malina is passage of black tarry stool and that will appear if it is more than 50 ml blood which get degraded in a bowel and that will present as a black dark tarry stool hematogesia is a passage of frank blood or we call bleeding per rectum or rectal bleeding and this is another way of presentation of overt bleeding ocular bleeding we have already mentioned that you cannot identify by your naked eye and obscure bleeding is occult or obvious but source is not identified and depending upon that we call as obscure occult or obscure overt malina we have already mentioned so quantity should be more than 50 ml then only it can present as malina while occult blood invisible or hidden can be detected by a fecal occult blood test positive or microscopic examination may detect occult blood in stool as far as etiology is concerned the commonest etiology what we always look for in a fecal occult blood is neoplasm some vascular malformation like ectasia then esophageal varices gastroviruses or we call portal hypertensive gastropathy acid peptic lesions particularly duodenal ulcer gastric ulcer infections like hookworms nematodes tuberculosis drugs like nsaid aspirin and inflammatory bowel disease out of this upper gi tract bleeding will be positive very frequently if it is before ligament of tris and after ligament of tris very frequently they will present less likely to be as hematemesis so bleeding from esophageal varices polyp colon cancer esophagitis gastritis gi tumors hemorrhoids fissure the pathology in a sigmoid and rectum that is hemorrhoids fissure fistula proctitis etc will present as a hematochezia while esophageal varices esophagitis gastritis gastric ulcer duodenal ulcer gastric carcinoma drug induced gastritis stress ulcer all those will present as a upper gi tract bleeding in the form of hematemesis and if there is a quantity of a blood loss is more than 50 ml but cannot be seen by a naked eye will present invariably as malina it is more common with upper gi tract bleeding or with a small bowel bleeding but in a lower part of a colon it will present as hematochezia so occult bleeding is very common in carcinoma other is inflammation maybe esophageal ulcer gastric ulcer duodenal ulcer erosive gastritis etc crohn's lesion or ulcerative colitis we call inflammatory bowel disease indirectly we always look for this common conditions which are seen in everyday practice where blood loss is scanty can present as occult bleeding and if it is more than 50 ml it can present as malina there is a big list vascular disorder infectious disorder other causes causes in less than 40 years celiac disease crohn's disease 
more than 40 year vascular ectasia NACID use etc there are many causes you can see here esophagitis accounts for 10 percent then peptic ulcer accounts for 35 to 50 percent vascular malformation is 5 percent then aorto duodenal fistula very very rare absolutely rare then liver disorder that is particularly varices 9% 2 to 9% mallory vis 5% then can esophageal cancer 2% drug induced and alcohol 20% if you see this two is topmost nacid alcohol use peptic ulcer esophagitis varices they are more common so presentation can be occult GI bleeding which will invariably present as an iron deficiency anemia or recurrent iron deficiency anemia and then you search for the GI tract causes and you find out some pathology is present then we call that as an occult bleeding in this particular condition but if you can't identify the cause we use a word obscure and in that obscure if there is an overt bleeding we call obscure overt and if there is an occult bleeding where you cannot see by your naked eye you detect that blood loss under microscope or by fecal occult blood test positive then we call that as an occult obscure and if it is that is a frank bleeding which may present as malina or may present as hematochezia or hematemesis we call that as an overt bleeding so those are the few terms which are commonly being utilized. So occult bleeding or overt bleeding either as hematemesis or hematochezia or as malina that is a common mode of presentation. Obscure is only after investigation. So once you do a thorough investigation either by endoscopy or by radiological investigation we call as barium studies etc. And if you can't identify the cause, then you can label that as an obscure. So if occult bleeding and investigation negative, so occult obscure. If it is overt bleeding and investigation wise negative, no identifiable cause, overt obscure. These are the terms. So whenever you come across a person in whom you are having iron deficiency anemia, you always go for evidence of iron deficiency anemia that is low hemoglobin, low ferritin, microcytic hypochromic anemia. Now you go for investigations. One of the simple most test which is very easy is fecal occult blood test positive. So you go for FOBT or you go for fecal immunological test that is called I. I is put in front, small i, immunological fecal occult blood test. So that is to identify the immunochemical test wise. So if that is positive means there is a occult bleeding and you cannot see by a naked eye. Now you want to identify the cause. So for identify the cause you can go for colonoscopy, upper GI endoscopy, and then you will have to investigate for small bowel. So flexible sigmoidoscopy, flexible colonoscopy, upper GI endoscopy and then even if you can't identify you can go for CT colonography etc. So CT or MRI can be done and then depending upon the investigations depending upon what you are clinically suspecting from a history, from examination, etc. You can go for celiac disorders, serology, that is antibody, confirm the diagnosis of celiac disease with upper GI endoscopy or small bowel biopsy. Biopsy is absolutely necessary in this case. And if it is negative, then you go for a what we call as a premenopausal woman. We'll be going into next slide because in a female you will have to look for gynec pathology 
as a cause of iron deficiency anemia so suspected occult obscure occult means you are gi tract investigations by endoscopy is negative so there are three possibilities which will be coming across there is no visible gi loss so fecal occult blood test is positive now second is on explained iron deficiency anemia suspected to be caused by gi loss means will cause there is a obscure and unexplained iron loss without anemia suspected to have a gi loss three possibilities fecal occult blood test positive means there is definitely a loss and you are suspecting because there is no identifiable cause that's why you are labeled as an obscure so positive iron deficiency anemia is there here it is positive but there is no iron deficiency anemia here there is unexplained iron deficiency anemia unexplained iron deficiency anemia suspected to have a gi blood loss and suspected to be caused by gi blood loss so those are the possible conditions so now suspected occult blood loss and obscure positive for fecal occult blood test positive asymptomatic individual without iron deficiency anemia or iron deficiency anemia is there with without any particular family history of colon or gastric cancer now if age is more than 50 you will have to go for colonoscopy and consider even upper gi endoscopy also and less than 50 years ignore if fecal occult blood test results no further investigation is required all other possible case scenario including iron deficiency anemia or person has got iron deficiency anemia ignore fecal occult blood results and proceed as dictated by the other finding like symptom signs family history of malignancy etc so depending upon that you will be proceeding for further investigations so indirectly whenever you get an obscure gi bleeding means you are not able to identify now this obscure bleeding is with occult or with overt there is always second look for upper endoscopy and colonoscopy or you can also go for a post enteroscopy suppose you find out the cause then you can go for the treatment say it is negative and in that negative now if it is obstruction you will have to go directly for ct or mri and if it is non obstructive then capsule endoscopy should be done and then depending upon that you can go for and finally try to identify the cause and after doing a ct or mri if it is positive go for specific treatment if it is ct mri is negative then follow up suspect for suspected recurrence and then again you can go depending upon what you require or what you suspect clinically there is another chart which tells you that go for repeat endoscopy whenever you are having a obscure bleeding either occult or overt you are not able to identify the cause repeat endoscopy again if there are a red flag signs and if you identify the cause treatment accordingly if it is negative proceed with a small bowel evaluation and in that small bowel evaluation too either with what we call is a capsule endoscopy or with ct mri and then if it is positive treat accordingly if you can't identify the cause observation and step wise same things shown here if you identify the cause go for surgical treatment depending upon what you are suspecting clinically you can go for angiography you can go for endoscopy you can go for uh, what we call as a radiological investigation ct or mri etc capsule endoscopy you can go for or you can go for enteroscopy all those investigations can be done these are all different algorithms this is again a simple one 
obscure variety consider a second again repeat an endoscopy if it is positive specific treatment if it is negative if it is obstruction go for ct mri if it, there is no obstruction go for a video capsule investigations if it is positive either in a ct or video capsule then specific investigations and then you can go for surgery if it is video capsule negative then you can observe treatment for iron deficiency anemia and if there is a recurrence again you can go for again second in route of investigation group of investigation if ct mri is negative then you can go for video capsule investigations observe and treatment for iron deficiency anemia same thing if some person present to you with an iron deficiency anemia you are not able to identify the cause of iron deficiency anemia and then accordingly you will have to go for whatever we have mentioned before so these are different types of algorithm which are there you can follow whichever you prefer so this is evaluation of the patient with the positive fecal occult blood test whatever we have mentioned before same thing this is iron deficiency anemia with or without positive fecal occult blood test positive now so occult blood test is the most common test which requires to identify the presence of porphyrin or iron in stool and to identify the cause upper gi or lower gi endoscopy push enteroscopy capsule endoscopy radiographic contrast study nucleus scan angiography intraoperative enteroscopy etc are the leading test to identify the etiology and even in in, in all this investigation if it is negative we use the word obscure for occult blood there are two classical test which are being there one we call as a white test or him occult test which can be done in a laboratory by a chemical test or can be done by the ready made kits which are available now there is always a chance of false positive in less than 2% two different samples from stools are taken over a 3 days period laxative up alters the results causing a false positive and false negative results so laxative should be avoided false positive results can be there because of the food rich in peroxidase or containing iron like meat non vegetarian diet broccoli cauliflower person who is on a iron oral treatment etc and false negative can be because of presence of vitamin c or food containing vitamin c so even a person who is taking large quantity of vitamin c either in the form of a tablets or in the form of a food material like lemon or citrus fruits it can be false negative false negative from taking vitamin c or a food containing vitamin c and false positive can be because of non vegetarian diet broccoli cauliflower or iron tablets it is almost we say that whenever there is an iron deficiency anemia with occult blood test positive always look for malignancy because it is the most common cause for occult blood test positive so for occult blood test positive it is called fecal occult blood test or stool occult blood test there are test which can be done by a chemical materials and by ready made kits which are guaiac based test either hemocult hemocult 2 hemocult 2 sensa these are different types of test kits which are available there is another test is called hemo quant test which detects heme for firing and there is immunologic immunochemical test called heme select test or flex sure occult blood test which are available in the form of this kits like hemospot etc and which are immune immunochemical 
I is put in front and G E are those for GWAC based test. So GWAC based test there are some advantages there are disadvantages. In for firing test there are advantages and disadvantages. GWAC based test readily available convenient inexpensive good patient compliance and can be performed by a physician we can perform in an OPD also. Disadvantage depends upon the degree of hydration, storage, then affected by the site of the bleeding, dietary restriction is required. Him for firing, advantages, no interference with the dietary peroxidase or rehydration, highly accurate and indicator of bleeding of regardless of the level. Now for him for firing test, you require a laboratory setup, time consuming, you require 90 minutes false positive results with a non-human hemoglobins. So this is the main disadvantage of him for firing test and immunochemical disadvantage again needs laboratory setup requires storage and affected by the site of bleeding. And this is highly specific can be performed in an OPD dietary restriction are not required stable up to 30 days and detect as little as 0.3 milligram per gram of stool. So these are more commonly being utilized and but they are expensive while these are relatively cheap inexpensive. These are relatively costly. Recommended test for occult blood is white based test which are more commonly Two areas from each consecutive stool should be taken for two or three days. All samples within four days of collection. Do not rehydrate the slide prior to development. For three days prior to the test, avoid large dose of vitamin C, oral iron, aspirin, non steroidal anti inflammatory, red meat, fruits, vegetables that contain catalase or peroxidase, cucumber, cauliflower, etc. And even one positive should be considered as positive test even without dietary restriction. False positive and false negative we have already mentioned. You can have a good number of conditions even with iodine, aspirin and NSCID can also give rise to false positive. Non-human hemoglobin can also like red meat can also produce rehydration can also produce false positive and most common as far as false negative is concerned vitamin C. So false positive conditions and false negative particularly false negative vitamin C and iron supplement containing vitamin C. While in false positive aspirin and anti-inflammatory NSAID, red meat particularly myoglobin and myoglobin which is present in a red meat and fish, green vegetables, even contamination by menstrual period or by bleeding PR, intestinal bacteria that produces peroxidase enzyme etc. can give rise to false positive results. This is the mode in which you do the fecal occult blood test. So this is glycex smear test which can be done. This is immunochemical test and this is flushable reagent pads are available and you can do the test by those. If you can't identify by those and you are you want to investigate for and deficiency anemia the cause of that you can go for wireless capsule endoscopy deep enteroscopy which can be double balloon single balloon or spiral enteroscopy different types of endoscopes are available enteroscopes are available double balloon enteroscopy etc advantages and disadvantages are mentioned here here advantages and disadvantages are mentioned at your leisure time you can go back okay now the future of investigations will be on a robotic materials which you can introduce in the stomach then it can help you to find out the etiology those are called robots which are now being utilized capsule containing robotic material so disposable device, low investment cost, single use, advanced diagnostic function, 
pain is less advanced therapeutic options are also available these are those capsules which will give you a good images now the most important part because of the occult blood loss person invariably develops iron deficiency anemia but along with that depending upon the etiology of occult blood loss complication will be due to basic etiology now there is also one term which is being utilized in urine we call frank rbc present in urine we call that as a hematuria if there is hematuria then if you can see by a naked eye which is red in color and when you centrifuge there is a deposition of material red color material deposited at the bottom we we'll label that as a gross hematuria but you can't identify with a naked eye and under a microscope after centrifugation you demonstrate intact rbc we we'll label that as a microscopic hematuria and if there is a free hemoglobin present in a urine we call that as a hemoglobin urea if there is a myoglobin which is present in the urine we call as a myoglobin urea and there can be other material which gives rise to the red color to the urine which is not hemoglobin not myoglobin not rbc we call red colored urine now this can be detected by other means other than microscope is by benzidine test or dipstick method benzidine test is a method which you can also utilized in stool also but by and large it is very commonly utilized for detecting microscopic hematuria so that is called benzidine test but we don't use the word occult blood but some person still use the word occult blood in urine or occult hematuria and by using a dipstick there is one strip part which can detect a blood i'll show you that so in that strip this particular is orange color and when you dip in a urine and if the color changes say color changes depending upon the change in the color you can mention mild moderate and severe so depending upon this color changes if it is faint green trace green color 1 plus blue is green 2 plus blue color 3 plus and deep blue color 4 plus this is for benzidine test so depending upon the color change you can mention 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus and that is in a benzidine test and this is the entire test which is being mentioned here this can be asked in your oral and can be asked as a short note why dip stick method is also on a benzidine test only based on benzidine test only but depending upon this color change it is called mild moderate and severe so this is small this is moderate this is large so that will be the way so i end my lecture here thank you very much for taking out time i know that your time is valuable and i appreciate for spending some of the time with me if you like this particular lecture please do not forget to press button like subscribe and you can share with your friends also and in summary i feel that any person who comes to you with an iron deficiency anemia and you are not able to identify the cause of iron deficiency anemia by some of the investigation routine investigations and you are suspecting or person is not getting results with oral iron therapy or with uh, iron supplements etc and person is again developing an iron deficiency anemia do not forget to look for occult blood because frank blood or we call overt blood gi bleeding is easy to identify which can present in the form of hematemesis or hematochezia or as a malina you try to investigate by doing a endoscopy upper gi endoscopy colonoscopy or enteroscopy or with capsule enteroscopy radiological investigation etc and if you can't identify the etiology you call that is an obscure 
but still you try to identify the cause of blood loss and if there is invisible or hidden blood loss you can detect by fecal occult blood test and in that we have got quacks based test immunological based test etc depending upon which is feasible which is easily available pocket etc you can do that test now even our ready made kits are available which you can do it in your office also and you can advise for further investigation to find out the etiology of gi blood loss so again at the end of this thank you very much for taking out time see you in next lecture and if you have got any suggestion do not forget to give your suggestions